Hello, beautiful people. My name is Honest Am. I am the creator of the Honestly Sis newsletter, a bi-weekly newsletter for millennial women who are truly trying to get their shit together. And I am here for a pick a car reading. Now, I know if you're subscribed to my channel, you're like, girl, where the hell you been? Actually, I was kicked out of my channel and I didn't think that I would be able to come back, but I am back and I'm so happy to be here. So, this is going to be a pick a card reading. What do your spirit guides want you to know? I like to do the pick a card reading as I'm like, as it's live. I like to do like a little prayer so that you can connect to my energy. But if you don't have time for that, angel number 33, if you don't have time for that and you just want to get straight to the, straight to the reading, the time mark is down. The time marks are down below. But for you guys that want to stick around and get into this reading, um, let's go ahead and get into it. Really quickly, I still use, I do also use angel numbers. I use, um, I don't just use angel. I do not just use, um, I do not just use the tarot. I use angel numbers to let you know that God and the universe are all in alignment. And I also use personal stories to let you know that you are not alone in this shit called life. All right, y'all. Now let's get into it. Um, so... <clears throat> Dear guardian angels, ancestors, gods, beings of light, we come to you today as humbly as we know how to just say thank you. Thank you for just allowing me to connect to my YouTube family energy this way. Now, God, I ask that any messages that you have for them or you deem worthy for him for them to hear at this time, that you please deliver them to me and through me as clear as possible. If any of their guardian angels, ancestors, and beings of light would like to step in as well, please know that this is the clear and open space, beings of light only. Okay, so I want you to take three deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Begin. One more time for the ancestors. And one more time for the gods. All right. Now, as I am shuffling up, I want you to, as I am shuffling up, I want you to think about a question that you may have, an area of your life that you want to focus on, and then when you open your eyes, I want you to go ahead and pick your pile. I'm gonna be quiet. I'm doing four cards, so think of a number one through four. And whatever is the first number, the first card, or whatever comes to your mind first, that's the one that you want to pick. My channel is about learning how to strengthen your intuition and listen to your intuition. So far, I have four, four cards came out. I can give you guys an affirmation card. Check your energy. <laughs> My dog is like making all this noise. All right. This is for your energy. And then the very last card that I'm going to give you guys. Hmm. So right away underneath this, I feel like uh, some of us or maybe all of us are struggling with some area of lack or scarcity. Maybe it could be, you know, you don't think that you can earn a living doing what you love. Maybe you don't think that love is for you. Maybe you don't think that abundance is for you. So if that is an area that you are struggling with, I believe that that will be for you today. All right. So now we're going to get into our reading. I hate that it's at 4, 4 17, but whatever. We'll get to it. So for pile one, your message is all about having faith. So this week, you may need to take a leap of faith. You may need to do something different. Um, every time I see faith and it is literally like this angel jumping through the hoop. So this week, what area in your life do you need to take a leap of faith in? Do you need to maybe take a leap of faith and change up your eating habits? Maybe you need to take a leap of faith and allow somebody to come into your life. Maybe you need to take a leap of faith and sign up for that class that you've been thinking about for so long. You cannot have, you cannot, you, you can't, you can't, 
if you are continually focused on what you don't have, what you won't have, then you cannot possibly get the things that are for you. And this is actually reversed. So I feel like what God is wanting us to do is to come out of our scarcity mentality. Engine number 506. So God has asked you to have that leap of faith this week, to believe different, to do differently, and to strive differently. What God wants you to know is that you are inspiring. So maybe right away I'm getting the idea that maybe there's this, this idea, this project, this adventure that you need to be working on, and you may not think that you got the juice for it, Angel number 527. But I feel like what God wants you to know is that you are inspiring, you are capable, and you have every single thing that you need in order to at least start the process. So take that leap of faith this week and to really try to step out on, you know, take this leap of faith and really try to bring this adventure about. I'm going to read this card for you. I am inspiring to those around me, even when I don't realize it. I'm going to slow down. I've been on IG, so I'm so used to like trying to get it out under a certain minute. So I know now I need to just slow on down. All right. So it says, I am inspiring to those around me, even when I don't realize it. When I am welcoming, kind, and giving towards people, it inspires them to respond to me the same way. I am inspiring. So that's what God is saying is like, you may not realize it may be, and again, it may not be an adventure. It may just be. A simple habit of like you, I, I feel like because this is at the bottom, I feel like some of us are just like struggling and feeling like we're, you know, like we don't have it, but it's like, there is, um, when I was in um, college, I used to have a big sister who used to always say this saying, there is no such thing as a low key person. Like there is no such thing as a low key person, meaning that even the most, the person who thinks nobody is paying to them, there's one person that is paying attention to them. And I feel like that's what God wants you to know. Like you are inspiring. You may not have been in the spotlight all of your life, or you may have avoided the spotlight, but that doesn't mean that this adventure or this idea, or even this person is not meant for you with the devil. And that's, and the devil came up for this. So with the, I am an inspiring and I am the devil. I feel like this has to do a lot with, let's not get scared. Cause we know it's nothing about that with, with this five of coins and the devil coming out for me. What I feel like is that there's just like some self mentality. There, there is your mentality. It's this like self-sabotage that you have going on that you don't feel like you're aspiring. You don't feel like you're worth it. You don't feel like, you know, you can do the things that God has set on your life. And I just, uh, God wants you to have this, this reading today to know that you are fully capable. All you have to do is be willing to take that leap of faith and that leap of faith look differently for everyone. I tell people all the time on my IG, and that's at, at honestlyam.com. Maybe go, I mean, not dot com, but at honestlyam on IG. Maybe there may be a message for you guys in this pile, but I tell people all the time, you don't need to know all the steps. You don't need to know every single step. You don't need to know how it's going to be planned out, no matter how big your dream is. All you need to do is take the baby steps to make it happen. Your blessing for this week is... <laughs> And what I told you, a blessed idea. So look, you have this idea. Why you don't think you can do it? What, what is stopping you? What is holding you back? What addiction? Are you addicted to having this low vibration attitude? Are you addicted to feeling like you're not good enough? Are you, have you fallen in love with your story of being the victim? Like, is that what it is? Why don't you think you're inspiring? Because you are. You clearly are. Let's read this. A blessed idea. An idea manifests its a blessed idea. An idea manifests endless blessing, but you must act to bring the idea to life. The time is right. Know that the world is full of ideas floating around aimlessly until someone notices and bring it, breathes life into them. This is your time to shine. Have faith. And what's the confirmation? Have faith. Bam, bam. All right, engine number 920. So that is your message, Pile One. Um, that you have a blessed idea that God wants you to go ahead and take that leap of faith because this idea is not just going to better your life, it's going to better the life of everyone around you. I always say, what if this world is in chaos because you refuse to step up and refuse to take your natural place into life? So whatever this idea, thought, circumstance, I really feel like it's an idea. I feel I want you to come arise above it. 
Rise above the the this this lack mentality. Rise above thinking that it's not for you and know that it's for you and have that and take a leap of faith this week. All right, that is all the messages I have for you, Pile One. Namaste and have a blessed week. All right, Pile Two. Let me get a cup of little drink. All right, Pile Two. Education. Education. So when I get this card, we see an angel right here and it's literally like they are lecturing um, in front of a class. But sometimes I don't always get, um, this doesn't have to be a formal education, meaning you don't have to go back to school or you don't have to even enroll into, you don't have to go back to school. Um, this could be as simple as you enrolling in on a course online, enrolling in a workshop online. The beauty about this COVID period is that a lot of, um, especially universities, a lot of organizations are starting to bring their typical workshops and they're bringing them online so for a lot of people i know for me i'm a writer so there was just certain workshops that you you know they had to happen at a certain location and because i live where i live i'm in detroit there you know i wasn't able to access them but now that they're online i was actually just looking at a workshop that's going to happen a two-day workshop that's going to happen in december um about world building and i'm working on a fantasy uh murder mystery so i say all that to say angel number 11 16 uh, maybe that's something that you want to look into. Maybe there is something that you've been thinking about for a while. Um, and maybe you're just curious. It could be like astrology. It could be tarot or it could be something like even more traditional of like, oh, I wanted to get back into therapy or I want to write a book. Like it could be something like that. I feel like this week, God wants you to seek education. He wants you to allow your, your uh, curiosity to lead you. I also, uh, the second half of this is it could be a non-formal education and it could be more so learning about yourself, going back, doing the review of your life and seeing, you know, why did I make these mistakes? Why did I do, not even mistakes, why did I make these choices? Why did I, do, how did I get here? Um, why am I here? How do I get out? That could be another thing that God wants you to focus on this week. Your affirmation for this week is, I am grateful. I realize that what is right, <coughs> excuse me. I realize that what is right about my life outnumbers what I perceive to be wrong about my life. I choose to focus on what makes me feel good and makes me feel good. I am grateful. So I do feel like maybe this could be leaning more towards uh, not more of a formal education, but a uh, m learning more about yourself, having more self-knowledge. We won't, you won't be able to truly make a change. This is why I'm not really a big fan of a lot of self-help stuff because um, actually all of this is kind of being generated. My, you know, my honesty sis newsletters, this YouTube channel, all of this is being generated because I was making vision boards and none of these vision boards were coming true. And I didn't understand like why it wasn't happening. Like I watched the Oprah special and I watch, you know, I have all these things, and, you know, the secret and people say, Oh, all you have to do is just think about it and it'll just come. And it was not happening and it was not coming. But what people, and that's why I don't really, I, I made this vow to myself that I'm not buying any more self-help books because or unless I find one that deals on a subject of doing some shadow work and really looking at your life. And one thing that I did that was actually uh, life changing in my journey was I did an inner child therapy. And when I did this inner child therapy, it not only in that therapy, she not only talked about my life, she asked me about my parents' life, she asked me about my grandparents' life. And what ended up happening, I was able to see the patterns. I was able to see angel number 1340. I was able to see how certain things affected my father and how somehow it ended up on my end, how certain things affected my mom and how it ended up on me. So it's like some of this shit that we're dealing with and that we're struggling with, it's not even our it's like the shit that got passed on to us. So that's why I feel like God wants you to go back and do a review so that you can understand how you got to this point in your life. You don't go back over your life so that you can beat yourself up, you know, cuss your parents out. Like I did all that. I cut my parents off. I was pissed. But it's like I had to, <laughs> then I had to come to the point and realize like that wasn't even the purpose of this. Like the purpose of this exercise was not to, you know, cuss my parents out, to disown my parents. The purpose of this was so that I could understand why I made these choices, why I allowed certain people to be a part of my life. And I feel like this week, God is asking you to do the same. Another way to do that, if you, you know, you can't afford inner child therapy, if you're interested in learning more about the inner child therapy, reach out to me and I'll give you that resource. Um, 
But if you can't afford to do that, a simple way to understand yourself and to understand where you are at life is I always tell my clients, do morning pages. Now, I do morning pages as a writer because it's just a good way to do a mental dump. But it is like I, I realized that it's literally like this cathartic exercise because just think about it. You have stuff. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Just think about it. You have stuff that, that is just like circling in your mind all the fucking time, right? And the, re and the reason why it's there is because you don't ever let it out. So morning pages allow you to just get it out and put it on this one place. But I want you to do morning pages. And I want you to talk about your childhood. Talk about like what... Like, write your life story. Like, write the story of what you feel, how you got where you are. Like, just do that for maybe three weeks or maybe three months. I don't know. Whatever you feel is three days, three weeks, three months, whatever. Doing it threes, though. And then go back over that and look at all the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And that's where you will be able to identify your limiting beliefs and, like, where you are lacking and where, you know, like, how you view yourself, honestly. Page of Cups. And I feel like God wants you to do this because... What will happen is you're going to unearth something in an unexpected place. One thing that I realized was that I didn't realize how much your childhood affects your relationship styles. And so because my father was absent in my life, he was present in my life, but emotionally absent in my life, it was easy for me to be in relationships with people who say they love me, but treated me not in a way that was very lovingly. And it took for me to go back and do the, um, the to do the inner child there to be like, oh, oh, this is why I'm accepting this because in some way I am trying to work out my daddy issues through the males that I choose or the partners that I choose to be in my life. This could also mean when you start to allow your curiosity to lead, you you'll just be surprised where you end up. I tell people all the time, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I would be on IG or YouTube doing tarot readings, I would have asked you why. And that makes no sense at all. But because engine number 16, 1653, because I allowed my curiosity to just naturally lead me and guide me, I ended up here and I found a new skill. I found something I want to do. And now I can't even picture it not being in my life. I know that I don't do tarot the way that other people do it, but guess what? I'm not meant to be like everyone else. So I feel like this week, what God is asking you to do, go back over your life, allow your curiosity to lead, allow, go explore these different, you know, these different, you know, workshops and it's just these different ideas that you have in your mind because it's never too late. It's never too late. And I feel like with this being underneath it, that what God is saying is that by you doing that, by you taking the first step, by you going to get that education, you're, you will work yourself out of poverty. It doesn't matter if you don't have your college degree. It doesn't matter if you didn't graduate from high school. Your, your passion, your drive, that's what matters at the end of the day. Your belief. That's what matter at the end of the day. So I feel like what God is saying is be grateful. Know that you are, wherever you are in life, you are exactly where you need to be. And what you have in your life is the good outweighs the bad. And if you just go back over that and get the education of yourself, get go seek that higher education of learning a different skill, then you will feel more confident in your abilities and more confident in your life. And you won't feel this, this, this lack mentality at all. At the bottom, it's a namaste blessing. The divine in me acknowledge the divine in you. I bow in I, the divine in me acknowledge the divine in you. I bow to, I bow to you and honor the inner light of your. Excuse me, I'm going to read that over. The divine in me acknowledge the divine in you. I bow to you and honor your inner light of pure and unconditional love. Internal peace be with you. Internal love be with you. Internal joy be with you through this. Uh, <laughs> serendipitous blessing so i feel like with this set this i can't even say this word spend it uh serendipitous blessing go get that information don't be scared don't be afraid to learn more about yourself and don't be afraid to go get a new skill put yourself out there if it's been, if you've been wanting to do, if you've been wanting to learn about astrology, go Google and look up one of these astrology courses. If there's somebody you've been following online and they offer courses and you're just like, oh, I want to take it. Oh, I want to take it. Take it. 
If you can't afford it, ask them, hey, is there is there possible that I can do a payment plan? Or do you have another way that I can get this information? Do you know the, another cheaper resource? Like anything, if you ask people, you will be surprised at what they'll be willing to do for you. All right, y'all, that is all the messages I have for you, pal, to Namaste, and I hope you have a great week. And I really, truly hope that that, mes that message is beneficial to you. Bye, take care. All right, pile three. Woo, we getting on in here. All right, pile three. So, I, I, the first card that came up is Grace, and this is like an angel dancing. Um, every I don't know, the words that I just got off of this is amazing Grace. Like, I just feel like I don't even think you realize how much grace you have in your life. And grace is actually a spiritual law that because of just because and this is so funny this i've actually been this is going off tangent but stick with me okay people often only think about black people or our struggle as you know as a burden as a curse as a curse they can look at all the bad things and say oh look how much our people been through or look how much people don't respect us and you can look at all the bad or you can turn around and look at the good Look at how we were able to persevere through every single thing that has happened. I look at the strength of our ancestors and I just be like, wow, like I couldn't even imagine having to go through the shit that you guys go through. And so I say that to say that this world may seem very unfair for people with our color skin. This world may seem like it is stacked against us, but spiritually it's for us. We were chosen to do this. This was our burden to bear. And I feel like what God wants you to know is that you have, like, just by you being alive, just by you watching this video, just by you yarning and opening your mouth, you are worthy of, you are worthy of abundance. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of being cared for. You are worthy to reach your dreams because you have this grace. Andrew number 22. Two, two, two. You're in the right place at the right time. You are exactly where you need to be. And this week, God wants you to remember that. God wants you to know that you are alive. You are alive. I honor my life by letting go, dancing, singing, and feeling the fullness of joyful energy. I am my true self when I am having fun. I am alive. I feel like this week, and it's so funny that both of these cards, this angel is dancing and then it says dancing in here. I feel like what God is saying is that he wants you to loosen up this week. You don't have to, we, we feel like we have to work so hard. We have to feel like we have to go, go, go. And that's not the case. We don't have to work as hard as we've been working. There is this thing. We are not, this is why I don't, again, I was literally just telling one of the other pals, that's why I don't like the, you know, live your best life, the vision board, the, you know, we are the creators of our life. We are the co-creators of life. Co. co, co okay. Meaning we working in this, we working in this bitch with somebody else. Meaning that what we do is not just for ourselves; it is for the greater good of the world so i feel like what god is saying he wants you to just take a step back maybe you're feeling this lack in this mentality and like you know you're working so hard you're not seeing it and it's because it could be because you're not you're working too hard you could be missing the solution you could be working without god really quick story i am a, i am a writer i have an honestly this newsletter and when I first started my newsletter, I literally started my newsletter off of a, a, a Facebook status. I asked people, hey, would anybody be interested in getting a bi-weekly newsletter about love, sex, and relationships? Right? And, you know, people responded. And the funny thing is, I was writing letters for Honestly Sis, not even realized that I was writing letters. I was just at this point where I was just like writing and I had all these ideas and all of this stuff was going on I just wanted to get it out and so I, I I started honestly sis you know chugging along not paying attention I look up I only had a goal of 100 people I looked up somehow I got excuse me I looked up somehow I got to my 100 people but instead of me being like oh yes you know yes this is working and just 
keeping my head down and doing what I got to do, my, I got into my head about it. I got so like focused on, oh, well, how can I get to 200? And oh, and how can I turn this into money? And how can I do this? And how can I, and I just, I, 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 I lost the organicness of it. And then I hit a stagnant block. And then I stopped getting any people coming in. And then I stopped producing as much. Like I started to take on too much. I wanted to bring contributing writers on. And so not only am I trying to generate letters for myself, I'm also trying to edit letters from other women. I was trying to get my, I was focusing on my social media. So I was spending hours and hours on my social media. And then it just all came to a standstill. So I say all that to say, and then I stopped like liking it and thought I wasn't supposed to do it anymore. And then it took, I took like the summer off and now I'm back and I'm back to where I began because I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to work myself in the ground. I don't understand this, this social media shit. I don't understand these algorithms. It's according to every, you know, according to the, uh, the friend zone and the Sante, these fucking algorithms are working against black people, but I can't come into this space worrying about all of that. I can't worry about, oh, is this going to make it? Oh, what do I need to do to be seen? That's not my job. My job is to show up and, and to deliver these messages. My job is to write these newsletters. My job is to finish my book. All that other shit is extra. That extra shit, the people finding me, me, you know, finding my audience, me getting the post, that's God stuff. That's God job. That's not my job. My job is to show up. My job is to live. My job is to listen. My job is to know that I have grace. And I feel like that's what God wants you to know this week. Because you're coming into union. And, and so people see two of cups and this could be, two of cups could be, you know, a new relationship coming into your life. A two of cups could be a new partnership coming, a new business partnership coming into your life. But I feel like, fuck all of that. Let's make this about you. I feel like this is you coming into union. I feel like you have this masculine part down pat. I feel like you know how to work hard. I feel like you know how to plan. I feel like you know how to, you know, get a vision and break it down into baby steps. You know how to do that shit. You're the bomb at that. You got it. Okay. What you need to understand is this feminine side, the letting go side, the not worrying so much side, the doing what you can do today side. That's what God wants you to focus on this week. Lean into your divine feminine energy more. And I actually have a video on my IG at Honestly Am um, that speaks all about the divine energy and how you can tap into that just a little bit more. So if you feel inclined, I'll make sure I put that down in um, the show notes or the notes down below. But if you feel so inclined, definitely make sure you check that out because I feel like that's what's happening to you this week. I feel like you have reached this kind of like this standstill. And you're just like, oh, what's going on? What's nothing is working, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like instead of just, you know, trying to forge ahead, take a step back and lean into your divine feminine energy more. Your blessing. Oh, I love this. The blessing of a door closing. One moment, nothing is happening. Then everything seems to happen at once. A door soon closes, but before you know it, another opens. You walk through into a bright new life, one in which you can truly be who you are. So I feel like this week you may be, you may, you may experience a small setback. I'm going to be honest. I do get the idea that you may experience a small setback, but no, a small setback. But no matter what that setback is, it is setting you up for success. So don't get so caught up in, oh, no, like, what is that going my way? Like, my, I'm going to tell you one more thing. I didn't get into my, I wasn't in my YouTube channel. I had literally just spent money on getting the SEO audit. I literally just completely revamped my, my, my YouTube page. And then I got kicked out of it for the whole summer. Did I complain? Hell yeah, I did. Was I upset? Hell yeah, I was. But did I keep working? Yes, I just did my stuff on IG. And now I'm back here. And I learned something by going with the flow and stepping into that divine feminine energy. So that's why I feel like what God wants you to do. Go with the flow this week. Know that you have grace. Know that no matter what things look like, they are working in your favor. And know that sometimes, right before you are about to hit that breakthrough, there's a dark period, but just hold on, hang tight, and know that your crown is bought and paid for. 
All right, group three, that is all the messages I have for you. Namaste. I hope that it's a blessing to you. And now I'm going to go on to my last but great group, group four. <clears throat> All right, group four. Woo! So these have been some messages today. Yes, okay. All right, so group four, your message is all about intention this week. Ah, right away, I hear that Talon saying, do nothing without intention. Do absolutely nothing without intention. A lot of times we're just doing shit and we're just moving, but we have no reason why we're doing it. We're not even understanding the energy of why we are doing it. So maybe that's where you are. Maybe you may be in a place where you are feeling lack, you're feeling low, you're not understanding how to get out. And I'm going to ask you, what are your intention when you're making moves? Let me tell you a very quick story. I am a project accountant by day. And for seven years, I have been trying to work myself out of being a project accountant. I used to apply for other jobs. I used to apply. I used, at first, I was applying for other accounting jobs, which that makes no sense at all because if my intention is to be a full-time creative, a full-time working and financially stable creative, then, so you got to, words mean things. That's why I said that. Words mean things. So that's my intention. My intention is to be a full-time, financially stable, working creative. So if that's my intention, why the fuck am I applying for accounting jobs? If I have this intention to build these businesses and to, book, and to publish these books, why am I applying for other writing jobs? Why am I not just working and trying to build the things that I'm doing? Because I feel like I'm smarter than God. Angel number 1330. Angel number 13. I mean, excuse me. Angel number. Well, we're going to look up 1330 and also uh, 3113. Because I think I'm smarter than God. And I feel like God wants you to know you're not smarter than me. Creation happens in three steps. It first happens in your thoughts. First happens in your thoughts, then it happens in your words, and then it happens in your actions. And I feel like what is happening is that one of these things are not, these three steps are not in alignment with where you, your intention. And I feel like that is why you are stuck. That is why you're feeling like, oh, I can't do this and nothing is working in my favor. It's because you're not even clear. You don't even have a clear vision. You just like, I don't want this anymore. And yes, it's very good to know that you don't want that anymore, but God needs to know what you do want so that he can get you there. If you keep making decisions just reactively and just, you know, and, and that's what I had to realize because I had to ask myself, Am, do you really want to go work for someone else? Like in the midst of you trying to finish your book that took you seven fucking years, do you really feel like you need to stop and start a new job and take on new responsibilities, learn new systems, learn new people? Like, do, do you feel like that's the best thing for you right now? And I had to tell myself it's not. It's not the best thing right now for me. It's not even ideal. So I feel like that's what God is saying is like, be, be mindful because what is happening is you're making these quick decisions and you're putting your, you keep finding yourself back at this place and you're not understanding why. And it's because you don't have any intentions on what you're trying to do. <clears throat> I am healthy. Uh, card number eight. This is all about abundance, um, abundance and prosperity. I am healthy. I honor my body and I am grateful for the work it does for me. I nourish my body through self-care. I rest when I need to rest. I eat nourishing meals when I need to eat. And I exercise when I need to exercise. I am healthy. So, group four. The message that is coming up for me right away is that you have to start taking care of yourself. Okay? Okay. I'm going to be honest. You have to take care of yourself. Yes, things have been bad in your life. Yes, you may have been in this lack mentality, but you're not there anymore. You're, you're not who you are before. You don't even, you don't look the same way that you used to look. You know, you don't have the same friends. You are not who you are before. And so now it's time for you to start hearing yourself in that direction. Start treating yourself like you love yourself. Yes, we have been in quarantine and everybody is gaining weight, but baby... You cannot eat fast food every single day and expect your body to function at its highest potential. If you are feeling, if you're feeling some type of angst or, you know, just in your body, you're hurting, go get a look at. Start, you don't have, start, if, if, and my thing is, if weight has always been an issue for you, you don't have to do something major. Nobody's asking you to go on a fucking keto diet. Like, you don't have to do that. But you can start by saying, okay, 
to this month is out. Well, I was supposed to do it. I failed. It's okay. I'm going to do it in December. No fast food December. No fast food November. Drink a gallon of water January, like baby steps. And when you start doing baby steps, when you just have that intention that, God, I want to be my best, my best self. See, it got to start in your mind. If you don't feel like you are your best self, if you don't feel like you're worthy of looking your best and being your best, then of course you ain't going to want to get your ass up and go work out. But who do you think, who do you really truly see yourself being? What is your intention for life? Do you want to be here? I want you to take care of yourself. Baby steps. Baby steps. Work out one day a week. Do yoga twice a week. Walk your dog every day. Like, just baby steps. Eat a salad at least three times a week. It doesn't have to be these big dramatic things. And honestly, that's how we fuck ourselves up by trying to do these big dramatic overhauls and then we get there and we're tired or we like, I don't want to do this. This is too much. And I feel like what God is saying is just baby steps. Think about your intention. Think about where you want to be in life. And then and then work there. Allow your curiosity to lead. Six of Swords is what came out. Every time I see this card, it is Six of Swords. Is This is my card of a savior. You're looking for somebody to help you. Like You're like, please, please, somebody come out. And I feel like what God is saying is, first of all, nobody is coming to save you. I know that's hard to hear, but nobody is coming to save you. There is no savior. There is no savior coming to save you. God already didn't die on the cross. He's not coming back to do that shit again, okay? <laughs> like he did it. He ain't coming back to do that again. So it's on you. You save yourself and you save yourself by the decisions that you make on a daily basis. That's not saying that if you fuck up, you're going to be fucked up forever. It's just that you have to know that you are in control of your, not, your life. Age number 36, 36. You are the one who has to set those intentions. You have to know that you're healthy. You have to honor your body. It starts with you. If you don't honor yourself, how can you expect other people to honor you? Also, I feel like God is saying he can't save you. He can't help you if you don't even know what you want. If you don't even have a clear vision of your life, how can he possibly help you? Last card is a blessing moving in time. The present circumstances are guiding you to a sacred space inside you from where you will see things more clearly. Look through the eyes of the soul and you will find the answer. This card is a blessing moving in time. The time will soon come. So this is what I'm, this is what I'm getting. It's coming. In the moment, the moment that you start to look at yourself differently, the moment you start to carry yourself differently, the moment that you really truly, you know, like just set that intention for your life and view yourself differently, your blessing is going to come. But you, it's not going to happen if you keep looking for somebody to rescue you. If you keep having these woe is me stories. You're not lost. You're not hurt. You're not weak. Baby steps. That's all. Baby steps. What's your intention? Think about your intention of your life. I feel like what God is saying is that this is happening. These pains that are happening in your body. For some reason, I just feel like it's a pain that's happening in your body. It's because he wants you to know like enough is enough. Your body can only take so much. If you, if you put the wrong fuel, if your car takes premium gas and you continually put regular gas in your car without getting an oil change or anything like that, eventually the car is going to stop performing. Eventually the car is not going to be able to form to its full capabilities. And that's why I feel like what God is saying to you. Take this time, set an intention over your life. Think about where you want to go. Think about the vision that you have for your life and then figure and then take those baby steps to making it happen. You don't need anybody to rescue you. It's time for you to rescue yourself. 
All right, that is all of the messages I have for you. I hope that they were a blessing to you. Namaste. Until we meet again, never give up your dreams. Never let the internet rush you. And never, ever let somebody tell you what you can't do. Mwah! Don't be good, my nigga. Be great. See you next week.